Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, we're continuing our, our discussion of Wallace No Can, and uh, this time we're going to we will be using Wallace No Can's uh, poems that you read for this week as a as a uh, um, example of how to do uh, textual analysis. So in this lecture, I'll walk you through a, a really brief interpretation of his poetry. Uh, that will help model this idea of textual analysis. So let's start by, by thinking about textual analysis and what it is. So textual analysis is, is something, it's, it's, a, it's a technique you do when you're doing these literary analysis or literary criticism papers, which is of course the assignment that you're currently working towards and that we're building towards as a class. But so textual analysis is where you're not just analyzing the work as a whole, but you're zeroing in on or you're narrowing your focus to some specific language from the text. You're, you're looking at a specific sentence or a line from a poem or a passage uh, or the, the choice of certain words over other words specifically. So we're looking for real hard textual evidence when we do textual analysis. So the definition uh, here for our purposes uh, is uh, the development of claims, opinions, and interpretations of literature that engage directly with the language in the text itself. So as long as you're saying something about the, the book or poem that can be backed up by the words within that book or poem, then you're performing textual analysis. Uh, so, so here we'll, we'll, we'll talk about this with Wallace Nocan's work, and uh, I want to uh, continue with the theme of the week of, of assimilation and what, how Wallace Nocan uh, treats that, that topic. Okay, so uh, a, an initial technique that we can talk about for doing textual analysis is to look for patterns. This is ex particularly helpful when you're trying to uh, um, when you're when you're trying to find or identify a specific topic to write about. Um, th this will make sure that you're not just making like a one-off comment about a poem or or a book. That you're actually looking at something that is a theme um, or or a uh, or a trope that runs throughout the entire work. So take assimilation, for example, in, in, um, in Wallace's poems. He doesn't mention assimilation just once. It doesn't just come up one time. It comes up multiple times within his work. It's a, it's a major overarching theme, what in, in, um, in opera we might call a, a leitmotif. Uh, and so here are three, uh, three, three quotes that I have pulled from Wallace's poems that all touch on this theme of, of assimilation. The first, they're going down the mountain to shop using their harsh Mandarin. Um, so uh, here we can see the, the, uh, the, uh, the assimilation aspect in the way that when one comes, when, when, a, when a, a member of the Atayal group comes down the mountain, uh, they end up dropping their Atayal language and they end up adopting this, this harsh Mandarin language. So it's the assimilating towards a different way of speaking that we can see in this, in this quotation. And we have, in the city, I never speak a tile. I do my utmost to scrub my dark skin. Here we have that language use, but it's being um, equated with the act of even trying to shed one's own skin and um, look lighter skinned than one normally does. And then we have, though someone keeps leaving for distant places, like ripe fruit falling from the tree. Uh, this is... Um, this, this line refers to the fact that members of the, these tribal groups continue to leave and go off and, and, um, and, and assimilate somewhere else. And they become parted from the tree. And so you can think about a tree as, as being attached to its roots. And so here again, we have this, we have this um, severing oneself from one's own identity and moving off and assimilating with another culture. So... These are just a few of the, the lines where Wallace is, is clearly trying to touch on and engage with this theme of assimilation. So we've definitely got a pattern here. So we've, we've got a foundation here for a topic that, that, we, that we can really, really dig deep into. 
So that's the first technique, and I, I really suggest doing this with your literary analysis papers, is finding a few quotes and a few passages that all really um, uh, rally around a, a, a certain point or a certain topic so that you make sure you have enough content to work with as you move forward. Okay, so moving into technique two. Um, this is more uh, honing in on a, a single line, right? We, I gave you three lines before to help set a pattern. But here, we can inspect more closely a single line or a single, single quotation and even go so far as to identify individual phrases and even individual words within that quotation and make uh, comments about it that will really help us um, uh, develop our analysis. So here's the quote that I chose from the three. In the city, I never speak a tile. I do my utmost to scrub my dark skin. I have bolded and underlined the phrases and words in this quotation that I want to speak directly to. Remember our definition of textual analysis. You engage directly with the text. These are the exact, the specific parts of the text that I'm about to engage directly with. So this is really, we're really, we're really at the, at the, the core, uh, at the center of literary analysis when we're doing, when we're doing something like this. So the first point I could make here, let's look at the dark skin line. <clears throat> dark skin is an obvious reference to, to skin tone. And as we know, in uh, practices of assimilation and in places uh, that, that exist under colonial rule, uh, skin tone often becomes um, a, uh, um, a, a, very, a very loaded thing. Uh, people will, okay, will often immediately judge someone by their skin tone, or skin tone may factor into uh, one's position of power uh, within, that, within that community. So the dark skin, uh, of course, is, uh, speaks, speaks directly here to this, to this idea of assimilation. And the scrubbing that we see, now I'm referring to a different word from the quotation, uh, is being used here as a metaphor. It's so, so the physical scrubbing of one's skin in order to lighten one's skin is being equated here with speaking Mandarin rather than speaking a tile. So that one might, you know, behave differently in order to try to appear lighter skinned. That's what's, that's what's uh, uh, being, being expressed within this quotation. <clears throat> Then, uh, if you remember back to our, uh, the, the, the little history lesson that we just had on um, uh, tile people, you might remember the art of face tattooing, which is, is it actually was, is a, the, the practice involves the rubbing of charcoal on one's skin. Um, so this scrubbing of dark skin may have uh, an even deeper uh, uh, reference to a cultural practice, that of face tattooing and how over time, because of Japanese colonialism, the art of face tattooing was, uh, was basically eradicated from um, a tile culture. And so it might be that the scrubbing of dark skin is also a reference back to the wiping off of these tattoos that were such um, a vivid mark of being a member of this indigenous group. And then the last thing here is that phrase, never speak a tile. Um, and here it's suggesting that the abandoning of language is parallel to the lightening of one's, of one's skin tone. So uh, all the, these four little points that I've made about this quotation would all make for great discussion or analysis within a literary analysis paper. In fact, these would be, this would be really great evidence and analysis leading up to uh, a subpoint you might make in a paper. And here is a, here, here, here's a point. I might, I might try to make this point within a single paragraph of a literary analysis paper. Uh, here's the point written as a sentence. The passage between the mountain and city in Wallace's poems serves as a space of transition between authentic attile identity on the one hand and the reluctant act of adopting the ways of the colonizing power. So every time there's movement up and down the mountain, what we're seeing is this transition space between what it means to be a tile and what it means to try and mask or hide that and become something else, which is a constant source of tension within, within the work of Wallace Nocan. Uh, so so this, this could be like for a paragraph in a literary analysis paper, I would probably use a sentence like this as the last sentence in a paragraph in which I really sum up 
my meaty point. Um, but then the beginning of the paragraph um, uh, would be uh, me walking through these uh, very specific, detailed um, uh, uh, comments on this particular quotation to make sure that I'm backing up my, my main point here with some textual evidence. All right, so the last thing I want to say about literary analysis then is that um, uh, writing literary analysis is about making multiple points like these and then putting them together to argue a broader claim. So um, this is what I was saying before when uh, I was talking about how you, you really want to take some time with the text to, um, to, to actually uh, do some of these specific textual analyses to help really develop and really help build up uh, um, uh, uh, quite a few points to make within your paper. All right, if you have any questions about this, please uh, don't hesitate to contact me, and I will talk to you again soon.